place in our hearts that we will be able to abide in it and to apply it as we wait for your very soon return. Bless all of us this morning, Father. And may the Spirit will always abide within us today. In Jesus' name. This world we are living in is full of miseries, pain, and tragedies. And sometimes our personal sorrow, problems, and pain cannot be told to anyone around us. That is the reason why Jesus Christ said, Come to me, all of you who labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The reason why Jesus Christ made this invitation for us to come is because not all of our problems can be imagined and be told to friends. For this reason, he is inviting us to come. We would like to tell Jesus the burden of our soul. And this burden is caused by the work that we are doing and is also caused by the sins that we are doing every day. Because of this, the invitation for us is to come until Jesus of our problems. We would like to invite those of you who really have special requests to tell Jesus today to come before or here in front or just stand where you are and tell him your pains, your struggles, and what you feel should be told to Jesus Christ. brought us here in this very place dear Heavenly Father because we would like to worship you because you have created us and you have redeemed us we are praying dear Heavenly Father that you will make us worthy today to worship you and to receive the blessing that you have intended for us we are asking you their Heavenly Father, to be in our hearts so that sin will not reign in us. 
we are asking you, dear Heavenly Father, to give us the presence of your Holy Spirit so that our worship through prayers, through meditation of our hearts, through music, through our offerings, and sp spoken word will be acceptable in your sight. We are asking you, dear Heavenly Father, to bless in a very special way your son that you have chosen to stand before us, represent heaven before your worshiping congregation this very hour. Stand by his side, make him a humble nail upon which Jesus Christ's picture will hang, that all of us will be dismissed from this hall of worship, blessed, spiritualized, and strengthened. We are asking you, dear Heavenly Father, also to open our hearts and mind so that we will get spiritual principles that will guide us as we continue to live in this wicked world until your coming. Thank you for the assurance of your presence today and for the many answered prayer in the past and with the assurance that you will accept us as your children, forgiven from all our sins, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mao kiniyang panahon alang sa atong mga halad o ikapulo. Apan sa dili pa inyong na dungog ni aging Sabado nga ginapromote nato makaisunan ang atong building fund. So pwede man mahimo sa ginoo nga butangan niya o kwarta ang atong panudlanan. Why imposible sa ginoo kay siya tag-iya niya ng tanan? Apan buot lang sa ginoo usab nga makita o mabati niya ang atong kainiton sa gugma alang sa paghatag sa pagsuporta sa atong iglesia. Sa inyong nadungog ang promote ni Pastor uh, Gahong. Usa, nini nga uh, mga taknaa, samtang tamaga hatag sa atong mga halad o gikapulo, ayaw sa buot kalimting uh, ang ato po nga kirsing-kasing nga pagsuport usab sa atong iglesia alang sa atong building fund nga pinasahi kana siya usab nga uh, paghalad sa di pa atong dikon tugot ko sa pagbasa sa atong uh, tithes and offering reading found in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up, have you ever thought what is the point in supporting this or that cause? What is the point in week after week bringing money and other offerings to church? What is the point of smiling at people and bringing and being polite? Or what is the point of prayer? Everybody at the same time or the other counters those questions and doubts. Young people who would like to see changes happen past, as well as older people who have been involved in some charitable work for a long time can both become weary of doing good. Paul encourages us not to give up on doing good, 
regardless of whatever we may see, the result of these actions. At a proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. So today, give generously. Be polite, smile at another person, wash the dishes, make your bead, go for a walk, write and thank you letter, or whatever the Spirit urges you to do. Do it. Do not become weary of doing good. Heal, let us decide, just like you, you are never tired of doing good. Help us also to keep on doing good every day. Karon ang atong mga dikon andam na para sa atong mga halad o ikapulo.
ko, Diyos, yung labing balaan. Ginoo, salamat ka ayon ni kahigayunan, ani ka may nakahimo sa pag-uli sa among mga halad o gigapulo ang anak ka nimo. Tuguti, ginoo, ng aking mga bahandi, magamit sa dako kayong buluhaton, nining tibok na akong sa iyo taalang sa pagdali sa mga hamiling kalag, sa pag-andam sa mga katauhan nga wala pa sa kamatuuran. O ginoo, panalangin ni Usab, ang mato sa kanamo nga nagadala ni ini. Ang uban kanamo, siguro mga empleyado, ang uban kanamo, mga negosyante, ang uban kanamo, mga mag-uuma, o ang uban kanamo, adunay na kadaiya ng mga panginabuhi nga din kauyunan sa imong atubangan, nining mga matak na agino o toguti, nga ikaw mga bendisyon o mga panalangin sa mata sa kanamo. Nga dili kami makulangan sa tanan namo nga pinanglanon sa matag adlaw. Tuguti o sabamahan nga magalambo pa ang among mga buluhaton. O gaduna kami dako nga mga ikaigo nga ikasuport alang sa mga buhat sa di pa ikaw mubalik. O ginoo panalangin kaming tanan gikan ni mga kabataan hantod ka namong mga hamtong. Kay kini ginoo among ginatugyan o ginapasalamatan diha lamang sa ngalan ni Gwen Jesus. Time for our little worshippers to come forward. Daddy Ruel Selgas will tell you a story. Good morning, children. Happy Sabbath. Okay. Are you happy today? Okay. So, before I give you my story, I'll, give, I'll show you some one picture. Okay. Can you guess what is this? Train. Okay. Very good. So, this is a toy train. Now, my story related to a toy train entitled Terry. Okay, Terry and his train. Now, one day, Terry loves or always asks me, week, I'll give you extra more. So, Terry was so happy that his dad uh, is helping him, saving his money. Instead of buying candies or chocolates or even toys that can easily be broken, Terry saved up all his money in his little bag. Then, months later, before Terry's birthday, something happened. Unsa may naitabo? Na domen, unsa may naitabo? Unsa may naitabo kang Terry? He went home, and then, with a sad face, and crying. He cried a lot, and his dad asked, Why are you crying, Terry? Terry said, my classmate just sold his electric train, and now I don't have any uh, train at all. So his dad said, oh, how sad. No? I fear, Terry, that that friend of yours is tired for waiting for your money. So his dad said, why don't we go walking? So we go walking. Okay. But Terry said, I don't like walking. And his father said, Okay, how about let's go walking upstairs, going to your room. And then, as they go upstairs, as they open the door, Terry saw the very toy train that he wanted so much. And so, he asked his father, How, how is it that this train got here? And his dad said, I buy this train for you last week because uh, I am afraid your classmate might get tired. So I saw you working for it, so I just bought it just for you. So 
that, uh, that is the end of our story, and you can go back to your mom and dads. Have a wonderful Sabbath.
Our scripture reading for today is in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. James 1, 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I think this is the most difficult task that has been given to me. Because uh, when I asked the speaker to give me his resume, he just said, introduce me according to how you knew me. And, uh, okay, I'll do that. I know the parents of our speaker, even the brother, uh, some of the brothers of his father. And I know also that he is the oldest of the seven siblings. And the fourth, Marilyn, was my classmate in high school, in fourth year. And uh, also, he graduated from Mindanao Mission Academy. And after that, he went to MVC to take up theology and he finished theology. What I know just recently was that he was also a teacher in the academy here. I think it's Iligan City Academy. Because I've seen some of uh, my acquaintances that said, Sir, sir, he is our teacher. He was teaching a uh, Bible subject and also in the afternoon was the commandant in uh, the Pathfinders. Uh, cat, cat, no? Uh, yes, it was cut before. And... Uh, he is, uh, he got married to Ma'am Dali Oliverio uh, uh, Aliarde. And Ma'am Dali was working here. Even though he was married, he still continued to take up medicine. And that is where our lives cross. Because we were classmates in medicine up, up to... Uh, we graduated in 1983. After his graduation, he worked here in the hospital for many years. But God said that it is not good for men to be alone because Dali was already there in the U.S. So he also went to the U.S. They are blessed with three children. And uh, two children and three grandchildren. And now, I don't know how to call him pastor or doctor. But to me, the highest calling of a human being is to serve the Lord in his ministry. So I think it is right for me to call him Pastor Elbert, Elbert Muraldi, which is our speaker today. Let us all give him the time.
Thank you, Dr. Nadal, for that very kind introduction. You know, while I was standing here between two presidents, according to Carlos P. Romulo, you know, the once uh, General Secretary of the United Nations, when he was standing between two great Americans, and you know, Romulo was very short, and I was thinking also with that uh, experience of Romulo, standing right here tonight or today with these two great presidents, I, I feel, according to him, I feel like five centavos between two ten centavos. Now, for those of you who don't know yet those ten centavos before, you know, five centavos before was a little bigger, but less value. The ten centavos was a little thinner, but more value. So that's the reason why I'm here standing between these two great men. You know, President Tambalki, right on my right, has always been a frequent visitor in my church there in Loma Linda, in Waterman, to be specific. When he was still in Haiti, sometimes he goes to my church, take a vacation, because his two daughters are members of my church. So whenever he goes to my church, even today, when he has the time together with his wife, I always ask him to speak. And so this morning, to return the favor, I have to speak. You know, in the U.S., we are, we are very generous too. We cannot just tell people to speak and then don't return the favor. And so right here, I have this favor to return to him. Right on my left, of course, as you already heard it, was my former classmate at Southwestern University. We were together there in Southwestern. I never expect that guy, you know, when we go to school, just rolled up these uh, notebooks. I don't know if there are some notes, you know, taking medicine and put it behind his pocket. And one day became the president of Adventist Medical Center, Iligan. You can never judge a book by its cover. And that's right with Dr. Nadal. Of course, I'm happy to be here together with my former president, Mr. Delaguan, Mrs. Delaguan. And I see some, and that's good. That's very healthy. Don't worry. They're still okay. Anyway, when Sister Lani approached me, I know you know her, to be the speaker here, I didn't even expect that it will be here because this, this, was, this is my first time to be standing before you in this great uh, hall. I remember one time when Mr. Delaguan told me to speak. I don't know if it was here. It was somewhere right down there. It's within this campus. Many times when we come to Iligan, we always go to the central church. And so I took a privilege to just consent to Lani. You know Lani? Sister Pornis, that's to be exact, for inviting, or Lilan, for inviting me here today with the consent of your president. You know, in America today, as you may have heard, we are in the midst of uh, a very interesting election. Maybe you have heard about the two very unpopular candidates, and they have their respective weaknesses. They have their respective problems. That's why some of the electorate or the voters throughout the United States are having some problems who to vote. And so maybe you have uh, read it on social media, watched it on television, or maybe heard it on a, a radio or read the newspapers. They said, well, if they are very, these are two very unpopular candidates and very evil candidates, so to speak, choose the lesser evil. And we will be okay. Because we still, as people who believe in the word of God, there is still a God who reigns the affairs of men. And that's one thing that makes us very comfortable as believers of God. Now today in Southern California, it's almost 9 o'clock in the evening Friday. While we, I was preparing coming this way, my associate pastor was asking me uh, a question of uh, the, the vice president of the Southeastern California Conference Asian Pacific Ministries is going to our church in Apple Valley. I said, what is he going to do there? He has no appointment. 
Well, he has a very important purpose. And so I said, okay, now bring him there up in the valley at the high desert because in a couple of hours I'll be preaching here in Iligan. I thought, we have the same Sabbath day. Then I realized that it's still Friday evening there in, uh, in Southern California. You are 15 hours ahead here in the U.S. or in the Philippines as far as time reckoning is concerned. You know, <clears throat> while traveling this month of October right here in the Philippines, we have gone to many places for just the last three weeks. Our three weeks is almost over. And we are always having some challenges as far as transportation is concerned. We know we took the plane, we took the bus or the vans right there in Palawan, and sometimes we, uh, we take different modes of transportation, the tricycle or the motorella there in uh, Puerto Princesa, and then we took the motorized banca, hopping islands there in El Nido. And then back to right here in Mindanao with the plane, and then of course the van of Mindanao Mission Academy. There is one common denominator that uh, I always experience when we are traveling. And that is the experience of delay. Have you noticed that? For those of you who are traveling most of the time? Delay. That's why it impresses my mind for a while, the subject of delay. Now this morning, we are not talking about the kind of delay that we sometimes experience that we have at the train station maybe, or at the bus station, or at the plane station. I am not talking about the delays that are caused by our laziness. Sometimes we are delayed because we are lazy to go there or to do it. That's why there's a delay. I am not talking about that kind of uh, delay that has something to do with our laziness, or stupidity, or selfishness. That's why there is delay or lack of attention for to, or to any duty. We have this sometimes in our lives, but I'm talking about the delays like waiting at the bus station. Is he dead? My great-grandparents, they, they were already dead. But what happened to the, the saying that God or Jesus is coming soon? Why the delay? Why the delay? You know, there are times when there is no way to explain the reason why God permit delay. But the, we know that all things work together as you read uh, Romans 8.28, right? We know all things work together to them that love God. So I share with you today some of the reasons why God permit delays and some of his purposes. You know, friends, young people, for everything God does and, he, and everything God allows, He always makes sure that His children will experience it because of a very significant purpose, because of a very important purpose. Now, God plans that each life, each of our lives, as though that there, we're all had to do for eternity. We are always doing this kind of rapidity and fastness because we are about to experience eternity. Now, more than that, he plans its day with infinite concern and care. Why? Because no sparrow falls to the ground without him, without his notice, or the very hairs of our head are all numbered. God has a special work. God has a special work for each one and a special place. And it is a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing to know that we are at the right place at the right time and the right word to the right man. God knows that. And he knows that very well. So why the delays then? First of all, to develop patience to develop patience James the first chapter what was read earlier verses 2 to 4 
if you have your scripture with you or your Bibles with you, the analog Bible, but if you have your smartphone, maybe it has a Bible capability, turn it to James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. That we may hear the word of the Lord. I'm so glad, dear friends, that we can hear what God says instead of just listening to the echoes of worldly philosophy. What did James say there? You have right there on the screen projected. If you don't have your Bibles with you. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. That he may be perfect and entire and one thing, nothing. What you have there is the New King James Version, probably. Now, the word temptations means trials or tests. You notice the word temptations there? It means trials or tests of any kind. How can we count temptation a joy? Now, the Bible is telling us to count all temptations a joy, to count all trials a joy, to count all of these struggles a joy. How can we do that? Humanly speaking, it's impossible, right? But the Lord told us that we have to count it all joy when you fall into different trials or different tests. You know, if there is anything that develops patience, it's delay. Have you noticed that? If there is anything that develops patience, it's delay. Kung do na may Makahatag na to sa kitawag na pasinsya. Ang makahatag na ana mao ang kanang kitawag pagkalangay. I know some of you here have special friends. And this special friend might say, maybe next time. Or maybe next year. Or maybe never. Right? And you who is expecting an answer becomes impatient. But you know what? The biblical way of trying to understand this is because of the delay, we are told it develops patience. Kung magpailob ka, magpaabot ka. Kaya sa dugay ni mong pagpailob o sa dugay ni mong pagpaabot, mabungahon lang ihapon na siya. B, but let patience have her perfect work. Let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, one thing, nothing. It develops patience unless it develops impatience. It can do either one. Now, delays are very interesting in that they call for patience, but they also cause patience to grow. When there is a delay, of course, you are patient. And if you are patient because of the delay, you grow up. You don't be an immature person. You become an immature, uh, an, a mature person. That's why you grow. Delays are like challenges that we meet to use our physical muscles. We use our physical muscles to lift maybe a weight or maybe open a door or any other work. We have to have some, some muscles in order to be able to grow. Now, every time we use that muscle, we are told it grows, and because it grows, it becomes stronger. So it is with patience. It is with patience. Patience, as it meets delay, we are told, finds a chance to be used. It has to be used. We must have patience in order to handle delay. Every time we go through a delay patiently, Delay at the emergency room probably, or delay at the of, of, post up at the office, or maybe at the uh, at work. There is what you call patience. So every time we go through a delay, we have more patience, we begin to grow. Our patience is better, it's working, and we need that. Now James, the fifth chapter you have there in the board. Or the screen. You know, James apparently was quite impressed with the subject of patience. 
He speaks of it more often, as you notice in his book, that little book of James, rather in the New Testament. When you, once, when you open this little book, he's writing to those who are expecting the coming of the Lord. And any of them here today, just like me, all of us, I hope all of you are, it's a blessed hope. It is a blessed hope. Be patient. It says there, be patient, therefore, James 5, 7 to 8. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the, of the earth, and had long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now, James compared this situation like a, an agricultural operation. Agricultural operation. Notice the farmer, according to James. It teaches us the lesson of patience. And what a lesson these things in nature are for all of us. You know, the, the farmer sows the seed. Maybe some of you are farmers. Or maybe just simple gardener in your backyard. You have your garden. You sow the seed. There comes a time when there is nothing more he can do. There comes a time when the farmer has nothing more he can do except to wait for the rain. Wait for the rain, wait for the sunshine, wait for the growth of the seed. Now, there are some things that he can do. What can the farmer do or the gardener do? Occasionally, he can steer the earth or cultivate the earth. He can do that. Or maybe he can keep out the weeds from that particular seed. But he doesn't spend 24 hours a day right in that garden to wait for the plants to grow. No. No. No farmer does that. He does what he can do, and then he has to wait. He has to have patience. This is a lesson for all of us. He has to have patience, and this is a lesson for all of us. That's why, for the next slide, that's found in James 5 verse 9. Do not grumble, yes. Grudge not one another against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Do not grumble, in other words, against one another, brothers or sisters, so that you may not be judged. And behold, the judge is standing at the door. Don't blame others, in other words. Next slide. Don't blame others. Back, please. The slide about don't blame others. Don't blame others. When we run into a delay, what happened? We are tempted to find someone to blame. Have you experienced that? Malangay langay gani ang panahon ng zon. Usog ayo tamo unsa? Mubasol. We try to put that blame to others. We forgot that it was because of us. That's why, don't blame others. Don't blame others. When we run into a delay, we are tempted to find someone to blame. Remember, remember Saul, King Saul, who was waiting for Samuel, the prophet. He was getting ready to go to war. He had already his armor, and Samuel told Saul he would come down and meet him. But what happened according to the story, Samuel the prophet was delayed for seven days. Saul the king has been preparing to go to war, to go to battle. And he has already readied himself with the armor. But Samuel was delayed for seven days. So Saul waited seven days. He got more impatient all the time. Became impatient all the time. And finally the time when the waiting was expired. As far as Saul was concerned. So there with his own armor. Ready. And another one. He took some priestly garments. He was putting some priestly garments. Where, which he was not supposed to do. Because he was the king. He was not a priest. But he put these priestly varm, uh, garments. And put them on. And made an offering. King Saul. Then here came Samuel. He was late on that occasion, the prophet Samuel, but he was late in God's order. 
Samuel was late in God's order. He was on time as far as God's clock was concerned. But not according to Saul. When Samuel reproved him, Saul defended himself. He defended himself. This is what Saul said. You know, the Philistines were gathered together and I saw that I had to go to battle. I, and I didn't want to go without a burnt offering. So I forced myself and did it. And you know what was the, the response of the prophet Samuel? Samuel said, you've done foolishly. The Lord can't use you as a king. In other words, my friends, King Saul failed the test. He failed the test because he was impatient. You've done foolishly, according to Samuel. He could not experience delay without becoming impatient. That led him to disobedience. That led him to disobedience. The story of King Saul. Oh, my friends, I want us to learn to wait patiently for the Lord and do not blame others for the delay. Take, my brethren, according to James, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord. Now remember the book of Job. Remember Job. A very familiar story. In fact, we are, we are learning more about him during our quarterly lesson. You know, the Bible is devoted to the patience of one man, Job. You know, the 144,000, the 144,000 will go through similar experience when being able to understand they are forced to wait. And they are beca because they are forced to wait, they begin to cry, cry to God, long for deliverance. They, they are not knowing how long it will take and how long it will be to be waiting for the Lord. We are told that the very delay is essential to their development and is the best answer. It is the best answer to their petitions. That's why you find it in Great Controversy 631. The very delay. The very delay so painful to them is the best answer to their patience. And it's wonderful how Job, in spite of the fact he was sown or he was down in the depths of despair. He was down in the depths of very uh, regrettable situation. He rose to the height of expressing his confidence in God. And what did he say? Though he slay me, yet well, I what? Trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And he further said, the next slide. What did he say in the next verse? In the next verse in Job 23, 10, He knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So, my friends, delays are heaven's laboratories in which patience is developed. Delays are heaven's laboratories in which patience is developed. Another precious lesson which delays give us an opportunity to learn is a deeper experience in being true to God. Developing loyal and manifesting obedience. God has often designed experiences with this in mind. Remember when the Israelites, when the Israelites were going to meet the enemy at Jericho, God arranged it that they would need to do in obedience, what? To his commands to go around Jericho one round is day. One marching round is day and after marching one round is day th throughout the city, then they go home. Then the following day, another one round, then they were told to go home. Then the third day, they were just told to go one round, do nothing, silence, then go home. The next day, they were to march around the city, and then again back to their home. That kept for seven days, according to the story. And on the seventh day, they were to go around how many times? Seven times on the seventh day. They were to shout, and what would happen next? The wall fell. But day after day, they had to do something that apparently wasn't accomplishing a thing. My friends, faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. Next slide. 
were developed as they kept marching around the city. It is a wonderful thing during a time of delay to just keep doing. Just keep doing with what God told us to do. If you are in that particular position in the hospital or in the college or a particular ministry and you get discouraged because what am I, why I'm here? God, where are you? And with all these trials and with all these heartaches, with all these concerns, you have been promised that he's coming soon. And you see this, the sinfulness of this world. Faith and obedience. Just keep doing what God told us to do. You know, someone was telling a story of an experience that interested me very much. There was a man who was on his way to the office. His little son was going with him that day. So after breakfast, the father went down and walked across the bridge. After crossing the bridge, he happened to think of something he wanted. This is a story because this guy was a non-Christian. He went across the street to the cigar store. This man was not a Christian, but a man of the world. He said to his boy, Tommy, okay, here's the deal. Wait right here while daddy has to get an errand to do across the street. So you wait here until I come back. So Tommy waited. The man went to the other side of the street to go to the cigar store. And he knew the people there in the store. He got to, talk, to call, talking to some of his friends and forgot all about Tommy. He forgot Tommy. And so he went on his way to his office. He spent the whole day, I mean the half of the morning in his office as usual. And then went home. When he came through the door of his house for lunch, his wife asked, Where's Tommy? Where's Tommy? Oh, Tommy. The father remembered, where was Tommy? So he went down there. Right there. Where do you suppose Tommy was? Tommy was just right there where he left him. It was interesting because when Tommy was interviewed, he said there was a kind lady who offered to take him to her home and try to locate his folks. But I answered, Tommy said, no, daddy told me to wait right here till he comes. And Tommy said, there were a group of boys also coming my way. They came along and tried to get him to play basketball with them right there in the park. But I told him no. Because daddy told me to wait right here. And there he was. Tommy. A brave little fellow. Delay. Unexpected delay. Unexplained delay. Had not shaken his loyalty and his obedience. I say that's wonderful. And God bless that little boy. Every one of us can be God's little boys and girls. My friends, what do you say? It's going to be wonderful when Jesus, when we see Jesus coming in the clouds and say, this is the Lord. We have waited for him. Yes, my friends, delays develop obedience. The obedience of confidence in God and loyalty to his commandments. Delay also gives us another lesson, a precious opportunity to develop Faith and trust. Faith and trust. The next slide. We have the example of Abraham. What a man of faith was he? Faith and trust. God gave him in his old age the promise of a son. He and Sarah were past the age of childbearing as you know him. As you know them. They were already past the age of childbearing. But he believed his faith faltered for a while. You know, just like any human being, sometimes our faith falters. Abraham's faith faltered for a while. He and Sarah contrived another plan. They planned and they contrived to take Hagar, their helper. But the Lord never accepted that. The Lord never accepted that. And Ismail was not the one that God had promised. And finally, thank God, Abraham came to the full experience of complete faith. Faith and trust. Hebrews 6.15. Hebrews 6.15 says, And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. 
Because they were so patient. Because Abraham was so patient. They were given a son. For years he waited for that son of promise to be born. Did it happen? Yes. Isaac. Isaac the child of promise was born. And Paul said that it was true faith. It was true faith that it happened. Abraham's faith. Sarah's faith. All entered into that miraculous birth. Faith and trust were evidence that they met delay over the years. But the faith for both of them grew as it was expressed and as it was evident and manifest. Notice what God desires of us. And so, after he had patiently endured, he had obtained a promise. 6 verses 11 to 12. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. That's found in the next slide, Hebrews 6, 11 to 12. How do we inherit the promise? How? Through faith and patience. All of these wonderful traits are developed as we meet delay. I don't suppose there is any danger of us getting so pleased. When we study that we hunt up the possible tests and trials. Now speaking of the troubles ahead, my friends. You know, it's just like a woman that is about to bear the child on the ninth month. While she was still carrying this uh, baby in her womb, six, seven, eight, the frequency of the pain is far apart. But when it is already towards the ninth month, the frequency of the pain is already what? Close to each other. Now we are told by Ellen White, the assurance of God's promise through His Son Jesus Christ is very soon. Because we see the fast fulfillment of the signs. And we can even see it before our eyes. Before there were only just a few of them. And they are sparsely, you know, Far apart in different areas of the world. But now we can even see the fulfillment of these signs. Just like the woman who is about to deliver because the intensity is getting closer and closer and the pain is getting painful. Jesus is about to be delivered. His coming is about very soon. Why? In America, you have the equality of merits. In America, social issues are just one of the signs of the soon coming of Jesus. In the United States, instead of three bathrooms, you got only one bathroom. Because there's only a bathroom that's good for everybody, a transgender. And many more. And then you have the science of the natural world. Before earthquakes, floods, or typhoons, or tornadoes were just sparsely known. But now it's getting like almost every week, every month. Why? Because the heavens will soon be open. And just like the womb of a delivering mother will soon be opened. Because all these things are getting shorter and shorter. The season of distress, according to Ellen White. Controversy, great controversy, page 621. And anguish is before us that will require a faith that can endure weariness, that can endure delay and hunger. A faith that will not faint, though severely tried. So, whichever one you're going through is the hardest. Whether it is weariness or delay, or hunger, when you get them all together, that's something. That's something. The remnant will experience those trials. Think of Joseph. Remember Joseph? There in the dungeon. Joseph. He was there in the dungeon. Under false accusation. 
he was put in prison. After one year, his hopes are aroused. Are aroused. Why? Because he's given the opportunity to interpret the dream of two prisoners, two officials of the king. He had given. He was given that opportunity. One was to rest, to be restored to his position with the king, and Joseph asked him to speak a word for him whenever he is restored to his position. The chief butler was sure he would do it. But what happened? He forgot it. The chief butler forgot Joseph. For two years, he forgot it. The man who had encouraged him and interpreted his dream and foretold his getting out of prison, but this was in the providence of God. Joseph didn't know how long it would be, waiting right there in the dungeon. You know, I have tried to picture Joseph in that prison waiting and waiting and waiting. I suppose the very first day that the chief butler got back to Pharaoh, Joseph began to think right there. I wonder when he is going to call for me. I wonder when I'm going to get out of this dungeon. But a day passed, what happened? And another day passed, nothing. A week passed, nothing. A month, a year, nothing. And no hope except the hope of trusting God. Not one thing happened to encourage him. He didn't know how long that delay would continue. But at the right time, my friends, brothers and sisters, but at the right time, the Lord turned things around. The chief butler, hearing Pharaoh's dream, said, O oh, king, I do remember. It's my fault. I, I have my faults. I forgot. I forgot this day. There is a man down there. There is a man down there in the prison who came, into, who came to interpret dreams. He interpreted my dream. It came out just like, very nice. That's why I'm here. Then Pharaoh said, get him, get him, get him and bring him there, here. All my wise men have failed to interpret my dream. So God brought Joseph right there in front of the king. And the delay was over. The delay was over. Joseph had developed patience. He had developed loyalty. He had developed faith and trust in God. You know, a season is behind us. 2016 is about to be over. The time of Jacob's trouble is a time when we must have a faith that can endure weariness, a faith that, that, that can endure delay, a faith that endure hunger, a faith that will not faint though severely tried. We will be facing this trouble, my friends, whether we like it or not. Why? Because in this particular text in Revelation, that's the next slide, Revelation 14, 12. I'm sure you are very familiar. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Is the patience here? Is the obedience to God's commandments here. Is keeping the faith of Jesus here. Yes. All of these three. All of these three. Right there. Right there. Revelation 14, 12. If it takes delays to develop patience, my friends. If it takes delays to develop the habit. The fixed habit. Of obedience under all circumstances if it takes delay to develop the simple faith to the Lord and the remnant have all three of these traits do you think we have major in delays we won't have to hurt to hunt for them we certainly don't need to manufacture them but when God in his providence allows them whether it is a simple thing like waiting for a train at the crossing or waiting for a bus at the terminal, or some major experiences in life where we think, oh, we must have the answer. Thank God for these precious lessons. I remember one author of this poem, William Bathurst. He composed this poem that we always sing today. And here it goes. All for a faith that will not shrink, Though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of poverty or war. That will not murmur nor complain, 
beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief and pain can lean upon his God. A faith that shines more bright and clear. When tempest rages without, that when in danger knows no fear, in darkness feels no doubt. Lord, give me, give me such a faith as this, and then whatever may come, I'll taste even here the hallowed bliss of an eternal home. Isn't that beautiful? It's a hymn. It's in our uh, gospel hymn. Uh, Written by William Bathurst. There is one more blessing, and then we are done, that comes through these experiences of delay. In the book, Christ Object Lessons, I read a significant um, statement. Often he delays to answer us in order, what? To try our faith or test the genuineness of our desire. Think about that. Often he delays to answer us in order to try our faith or test the genuineness of our desire. Do you really want something? Oh yes, I want it. How much do you want it? Oh, I want it ever so much. Can you endure delay? If you want something, endure delay. Yes, my friends. So when you pray for something and there seems to be a delay, remember, God may be going or giving you the best answer to your petition while waiting because your desire can increase. We must show a firm, undeviating trust in God. Often he delays to answer us in order to try our faith or test the genuineness of our desire. The persistent asking brings the petitioner into a more earnest attitude and gives him an increased desire to receive the things for which he asks. Do you know the remnant church? This church. Now remember, my friends, we belong to the prophetic church. Why? Because we have a prophetic message and we are doing a prophetic mission. There is no other church in the landscape of any denominational institutions in this earth that brings that prophetic message, that has a prophetic purpose and has a prophetic, a prophetic mission. That's why we must show a firm and deviating trust in God. Often he delays his answer, yes, in order for us to try our faith or test the genuineness of our desire. Trust in the sequel. Remember, in that uh, Revelation 14, about the remnant church. You know, this church is going through the long journey about the waiting of the coming of Jesus. We are increasingly nearer to the end. And do you know the, the, uh, the picture in Revelation 14? Notice the 14th verse of Revelation 14. It pictures Jesus coming on the cloud. Revelation 14, 14. It pictures Jesus coming on the cloud. And then on the 15th verse, Revelation 14, 15, there is a voice of an angel. And I believe that his, this voice represents the prayers. The prayers of the people of God says to that one on the cloud. That prayer says like this. <clears throat> Next slide. Trust. Trust in your sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So as the righteous people long for the coming of Jesus, as they see the wickedness of the world increasing, and we see it increasing today, the last prayer recorded in the Bible will be echoed and re-echoed by the children of God. And what is that prayer? It's right there in Revelation 22:20. 20. Even so come, Lord Jesus. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. 
And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hebrews 9.28 And then the psalmist says, Psalms 135-6 I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. So friends, brothers and sisters today, learning these lessons of patience, learning these lessons of loyalty in obedience, learning these lessons of faith and trust, we receive day by day an increase of desire, longing not only for the answer to the prayers which concerns us today, but we're praying for the ultimate goal of it all, and that is the end of sin and the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. James 5, 8, Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. But someone says, But oh, I want to do something while I'm waiting. Amen. If you are good, going to do something while waiting, here is what Elder, Elder Luther, Luther Warren said, When you don't know what to do, when you don't know what to do, then you know just what to do. That is his quotation. When you don't know what to do, then you know just what to do. What is that? That is to pray and wait on God and work for Him. Why? Because prayer, according to Ellen White, is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse where are stored the boundless resources of omnipotence. Because it is through prayer. It is through prayer that we learn how to meet our delays. It is through prayer that we occupy our time in the delays. So that instead of becoming restless, instead of becoming fretful, we become trustful and we become restful. May the Lord bless us. Prayer, prayer, prayer. This is something we can always do. And I'm sure all of us can do. Joseph did it in the dungeon. Job did it in the ash heap. Jesus did it in Gethsemane. And the remnant will learn the lesson to its fullest in the time of Jacob's trouble. We need to learn all we can in, antip in, in, in anticipation of that growing, crowning struggle. Dear ones, friends, we are serving a wonderful God. Will the congregation now be able to meditate on it and reflect on it? Because very soon, we will be able to be ushered in that great kingdom that he has prepared for us. Despite of all these delays, yet he assured us that at my own timetable and in my own time, there is no delay. When we all get there, may the Lord bless us. This is my prayer.
Let's all stand for a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for all the good things that you have given us, O oh God. Thank you for the invitation to come with confidence, assurance right before your throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. I join with these children of yours, Father, that have come today with their burdens upon their hearts. Grant them thy peace, thy rest, and the assurance that through you, thou art hearing their request. Oh, we thank you, O God, that Jesus takes our poor prayers upon his lips, that he lifts his wounded hands and prays for all of us and with us. And we believe that his prayers are heard. And Father, all through this congregation that are standing before you are others whose hearts are longing for a blessing and I pray that thou wilt refresh everyone right here. Feed every hungry soul. Grant them that this Sabbath shall be indeed the greatest Sabbath of our lives. And so, Father, dismiss us with thy blessing and give each one of us the presence of Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we ask this supplication. Amen. <laughs>